thing is that it had holes drilled in it for putting screws or rivets through. And these were all over the place. Investigators now have a very strong theory about how the strip of metal contributed to the crash. 81 seconds before the crash, Concorde AF 4590 is traveling at 323 kilometers per hour down the runway. The tire hits the metal strip. The tire explodes and a massive four and a half kilogram chunk of rubber from the tire flies at high speed up into the wing. But Concorde's fuel tanks are in the wings. And the delta-shaped wing is not designed to withstand such an impact. This sort of eventuality had never been foreseen in trials. It was estimated in all the trials for certificating the aircraft in the first place that if a tire exploded, the pieces of tire that would actually come away from the wheel would be about one kilogram in weight. The chunk of rubber that hits Concorde's wing that day weighs nearly five times as much, four and a half kilograms. No one had planned for that sort of impact. What's more, you can match the large rubber fragment of the tire with a dent on the wing. But surprisingly, the wing is not punctured at that point. So, if the heavy chunk of rubber hadn't punctured the wing, what made the fuel leak out? The piece of tar which actually hit the wing and did the damage was so big and so flat that although it was so heavy, it didn't go through the wing at all. And it caused such a shock wave to go through the fuel that it actually blew a plug of wing tank skin outwards. The shock was that bad. When the rubber chunk hits the wing, it sets off a pressure wave which finds the weakest joint in the fuel tank. The fuel bursts out of the tank. 75 liters of fuel pour into the engine every second. But even fuel gushing over the engine needs a spark to ignite. Where did the spark come from? Air France Concorde AF4590 crashes after takeoff from Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport. Our graphics can simulate a virtual camera on the runway to reveal the cause of the accident. As the plane hurtles down the runway, a rogue strip of metal bursts a tire. 81 seconds before the crash, a heavy chunk of rubber flies into the fuel tanks. Fuel cascades over the engines. Not enough on its own to cause a catastrophe, it needs a spark. From the cockpit voice recorder, we know that the pilots have trouble with the landing gear on takeoff. As Concorde struggles into the air, pilot Christian Marty calls for the undercarriage to be raised. But it stays locked open. The only video footage ever taken of the doomed flight provides further evidence. It shows the undercarriage in the down position. What stopped the wheels from retracting? The most likely explanation can be seen in this computer simulation. Shrapnel from the burst tire flies up into the landing gear bay, where it severs power cables. The undercarriage is now stuck in the down position. Worse still, the exposed wires are whipping around in the gale force airflow. If the exposed wires make contact, they'll spark. As fate would have it, they do. That contact ignites the leaking fuel. And at that moment, Concorde becomes a flying bomb.
can now tell you what it must have been like for Captain Marty in the cockpit. From the pilot's seat, he can't see the flames. All he knows is that Concorde is losing power in engine number two just at the moment of takeoff. One second later, the control tower alerts him to the fire. Air France 4590, you have flames behind you. Computer graphics show how Concorde would have looked. Now to make matters even worse for Captain Marty, the number one engine is losing power as well. Events are conspiring against him. Aviation safety expert David Learmount explains why. There was a fantastic gush of fuel out of this quite large hole, was literally drowning out that engine, which gradually lost power and finally went out. So the pilots were left with two engines when they're normally accustomed to having four. It couldn't happen at a worse time. Captain Marty needs maximum power, and there's not enough runway left to stop. He wrestles Concorde into the air. Cockpit voice recordings reveal that at 4.43 and 22 seconds, the engine fire alarm sounds. And three seconds later, the captain shuts down engine number two. The drill for a fire warning is that you shut the engine down and cut off the supply of fuel to it to try and, and then fire the fire extinguisher for that engine to try and put the fire out. Concorde is now 53 seconds from disaster. Gilles Rogelin in the control tower gives what help he can to Captain Marty. Do as you wish. You have priority to return to the field. But at 60 meters, Concorde is too low to turn around. So instead, Captain Marty tries to fly the crippled plane to the nearest runway at La Bourget Airport, just five kilometers ahead. But there's a new problem for Captain Marty. The fire is now so intense that Concorde's wing is melting and disintegrating. At the rear end of the, of the wing on Concorde are the controls known as elevons which enable the pilot to point the aircraft's nose up or down. The fire was so fierce that the rear structure of the aircraft was being virtually evaporated. The pilot's essential controls were being destroyed. At the same time, the toilet smoke alarms are heard on the voice recorders. For the passengers, fumes in the cabin make conditions unbearable. Concorde is now 49 seconds from disaster. In the cockpit, Christian Marti battles with the controls, trying to gain speed and height. But he's being overwhelmed by the fact that the wing and its controls are disintegrating. Thirty-three seconds. The engine fire alarm sounds again and remains on for the duration of the flight. Captain Marty runs out of options. Even the runway at Le Bourget, now only three kilometers away, is out of reach. With just 11 seconds left, the control tower hears Christian Marty's final words. Too late. No time. Four seconds left. The plane dips below 15 meters. The final sort of act was the airplane reared up and heeled over into about 110 degrees of bank. So the airplane at that point became completely uncontrollable. Three seconds. Concorde could no longer hang in the air. It stalls and begins to roll leftwards. The hotel lies directly beneath. The plane is about to come down. Just 118 seconds after Concorde begins accelerating down the runway, 109 people are staring death in the face. 